um, and uh, making the slides available to everyone that's on the call. So again, you will get an email directly from us with a link to the slides, um, and we'll also be sharing the slides and the recording with uh, the community lead for your giving day. On the phone with me is Kelly from Kimbia. She will be walking through these slides today. A couple logistical things. Because we have so many people on the call, we've muted everyone, but we will have time throughout the presentation for questions. So over on the right-hand side of your screen, you should see a GoToWebinar control panel with a questions tab in there. And while Kelly's talking, I will be um, answering questions and, and pausing Kelly to ask her a few questions. So feel free to type those questions in as you have them. And with that, I will hand it over to Kelly. Thank you, Haley. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about how to add hashtag power to your giving day. Um, so we're gonna be walking through some of the social media basics so that you can get the most out of your big event. Give me a second here. All right, and like Kaylee said, my name is Kelly Frost, and I have, I think it's just taking a second for the slides to advance. There you go. Um, I've been with Kimbia for five years, and I am currently in charge of the social media here for Kimbia and for Give Local America, and just uh, wanted to let you all know that, like many of you on the call, social media is not my main job. Um, and so I'm very aware that we all don't have a ton of time to dedicate to it. So we're going to talk through some um, tips and some helpful hints to, uh, to make this possible without taking up a lot of your time, because I know we all have so much going on. So as you can see on the slide, uh, some of my favorite things are coffee and ice cream and especially coffee flavored ice cream. I love to hang out with my girlfriends and play board games. And I am over the Austin traffic, so my superpower would be to blink and be somewhere. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so as we talked about in our first webinar, why is social media so important? And um, we're gonna cover this again because it helps raise awareness for your giving day, it connects you directly with your constituents, and it really helps raise the excitement and engagement during your event, and it allows your giving day to be spread to your supporters, friends, and, and really increase your donor base. So um, this was some information that we covered in the first webinar. I just wanted to let you all know again, as Haley said, um, we're going to be sending out an email after the webinar. We'll include a link to the first webinar, so whether you were um, here for it or you missed it, you can go ahead and review that with your team. Uh, there are tons of social media tools out there, uh, and we're going to just cover a very few of them on this call, but this little chart here is to kind of help you decide what tool is the best for your need. And I really wanted to point out here on the bottom for discussions that LinkedIn group, we don't really talk about LinkedIn very much in these webinars, but LinkedIn groups can be a really great tool to go in and ask questions, to get some discussion going around your event if you need help with some of these last minute things before your kickoff. Um, you know, what did other communities do? What, is, what were things that were successful? You can start discussions on that and uh, maybe about live person events, things, things of that nature. So um, make sure to check out LinkedIn groups, and then also uh, if you want to ask your donor some questions, then you can always set up a really quick poll on Facebook or Twitter. So just keep in mind that keeping the discussion going is one of the key features of social media. All right, so in the last, or in our first webinar, this question came up, and it is, what's the difference between a hashtag and a tag? And I said that we would discuss it more in this webinar, so I wanted to go ahead and dive into exactly what is a tag and what is a hashtag. So the hashtag is um, what, what you're gonna be using to describe a specific topic. Um, a lot of your events are gonna have hashtags that go with them. Uh, so whether it's hashtag big give or um, what are some other ones, Haley, that you, have you've seen before? We would love it. Um, the hashtag I give local is the national brand that we'll continue to promote during all of your local giving events. But um, you should definitely on the home page of your giving day site, 
uh, check out the social media sidebar on the right hand side of the home page and you'll definitely be able to see what your community's hashtag is. So you'll want to use that in your communication, whether it's in Facebook or Twitter, you definitely want to include the hashtag. And so the big thing is that this is topic focused. So a tag or when you tag somebody, it's specific to the person or cause and that's when it's preceded by the at sign. So, uh, so for example, give local America is at I give local, but the hashtag I give local is the topic and you're going to search by topic. Um, and then, so, okay, if you have any questions, please type those in. I know it can get confusing, but um, just let us know and we'll, we'll walk through it again. Okay, so why are hashtags and tags so important? And this is how you are going to be raising awareness for your event, recruiting followers, and engaging your supporters. So they are really the um, bread and butter of what social media is about. Okay, so how do you use them? Um, you want to make sure that you're doing some research beforehand for your local community to try to figure out what your local hashtags are that people are going to be searching. So for example, ATX Dogs is a popular one here in Austin. Um, there's also like a social site that, that talks about different events that are happening here in Austin. So that's the one that you see in the bottom right hand corner. So make sure you do some research now so you know what hashtags you want to be using in your communication and which, which accounts you want to be tagging. When you tag the account, they get a notification. And so it makes it really easy for them to see the, see the post and either retweet it or share it to their followers. So it's a way for you to expand your reach. And during the, uh, especially the two weeks before, the week before and the day of your giving event, um, all of your community partners are really amping up their social media presence as well. So, like Kelly mentioned, you know they'll see it, they'll see your uh, post if you use the at sign and tag them. But they'll also um, really be following their local hashtag and the different hashtag giving days that are out there. So, um, anytime that you have room in Twitter um, and Facebook to add those additional hashtags, it really will help um, with the potential of getting your social media posts promoted again by, by your community foundation um, leading the event. Exactly. Yeah, they're going to be monitoring that hashtag so they can see it when you use it. All right, so which of these social media channels should I be using on my giving day? So in our first webinar, we really dove into Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So like we said, we're going we're gonna to send out the link to that. So if you missed it, don't worry. You can go back and watch it again. Um, in this, this particular webinar, we're going to really talk about Facebook Live and Snapchat. Um, so we're going to go into a little bit of detail of those. And then we're also going to talk about analytics and some scheduling tools. So that's what we'll be covering today. And before you get um, started on that, Kelly, I do just want to highlight again, I know this was covered in the first webinar, that if you don't have a comfort level, if you've never used Facebook Live or Snapchat, do not feel like you have to use them yes. to be successful. It's really about focusing and targeting your communications and the channels that um, you already use and that your donors already follow you on. So if you have a very strong Twitter presence, um, use that for the giving day. You can you know, think about starting something new if, if you're excited about it. And um, by all means, the giving day is definitely a way to engage new followers in new channels. Um, but for those of you that are really limited on staff and time, um, don't feel like you need to be in all channels. Just really choose what works best for you and what works best for your donors and who you're trying to target and, and you'll be successful. That's exactly right. And so that's actually why I put this slide in here. And it's, it's that, hey, look, okay, I, you know, if, you're, if Facebook and Twitter is where your comfort level is, then, then you don't need to do Snapchat. And, and I wanted to be honest with you guys that I personally don't use Snapchat and Cambia does not have a Snapchat presence yet. Um, that's just, like I said in the beginning, it's not my full-time job. I just haven't had the, the manpower to be able to get in there and start doing it yet. So I want to talk through it if it's something that your organization's interested in. I want to tell you some tips and tricks to get going in it. And I think that it's so important to talk about it because all of the recent data is saying that Snapchat is the fastest growing social media platform in the world. And we all know that that's where the millennials are. 
Um, so if you're interested in reaching the younger crowd, then Snapchat might be something that you want to start toying with. And like we talked about in the first webinar, if it's something that maybe you can't do, but maybe you have a, a child that can, that wants to do it for you during the event, or if you have a volunteer that's really into it, and then they're really comfortable with it, there are other ways to get into that channel that doesn't necessarily require you doing it. Okay, so I'm gonna just go into a little bit of Snapchat 101. So like, what is it? If you have no idea and you've never even seen it before, it's really just a quick way to tell a story. It gives you behind the scenes clips and messages. It's really fun. Um, the big thing is that the messages don't last forever and it's a great tool if you're interested in reaching millennials. So there's four key elements of, a, of Snapchat. One of them are the snaps, and those are the self-erasing photos that um, you can send to one or multiple friends. A story, which is where you can record multiple moments during the day, and they stay for 24 hours. And this is really where you're going to want to focus your efforts during your giving event. And if you are familiar with Instagram, the stories are similar to what the so the new Instagram stories. It's that same type of thing where it's going to be multiple shots from throughout your day that you can add into one story. And then memories is a new feature in Snapchat where you're actually able to add videos and photos outside of Snapchat into your Snapchat story. And then chat is the one-to-one -one text chatting. Oh, and on the side, on that other slide, there was some tips that you can go back and look at in the recording. Okay, so what, how do you use Snapchat? This is one thing that I've always struggled with. It seems a little scary. So when you first open up the screen, it's going to be the video feature, which you see at the bottom of, of this. And then when you swipe up, you get to your profile screen. When you swipe to the left, you get to the chat screen, which is where you can have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. And then to the right is where you see... Um, your friends list. And again, just, just to highlight here, what you see on the left, the, the Snapchat, those are the private conversations. The right side are the stories that will last for 24 hours. And that's, again, if you're thinking about um, enabling this for your organization and specifically around the giving day, that would be a great place to start because whatever your um, you know, videoing or taking photos of, you would want to be available to everyone. So anyone um, can that follows you can see your story, and that's what you see um, to the right-hand side there. All right, and then Snapchat is all about the filters. It's where you're going to see all the funky, cool things. And I also, on one of the previous slides, I pointed out um, – let me go back. Yeah, on that Snapchat 101 slide, you could see they had – um, filters for World AIDS Day, and a lot of organizations you'll see when they have big events or something, they have special filters that you can go in, and you can also choose the location of where you're at. So there's different fun things you can do in Snapchat that really make it uh, make it fun. I haven't heard of any community yet that has created a Snapchat filter, um, but it's definitely something that you should check in with your community lead about to see if there will be a Snapchat filter. Those are usually geography based. So um, if there is a big community wide event happening during your giving day, um, if you're in a certain location on the town square or on the main street, you might have access to that filter. Um, but again, for those of you that do a live person event, um, adding the filter for the location would, would be a great idea. Yeah, and you can also think about sponsorship opportunities there. When I was doing some research into Snapchat for this presentation, I saw a lot about how that's where like bigger companies are doing uh, these paid filters where then they sponsor them. And then, so I mean, anyway, different ideas there. It may be too late in the game to do something like that now, but if you want to start thinking about it for next year. Okay, so I do want to dive into Facebook Live, and we did talk about this a little bit in the first presentation, and I wanted to spend more time on it in this presentation because as I've been following Giving Days this year, uh, whether they're community foundation focused or higher ed focused, I have been seeing more and more uh, communities start starting to use live posting during their events, and I really think it's a fun and easy way to to kind of dive into this and and connect with your followers um, in a really engaging way. 
So did you have, Haley has a question? But before you go too far into Facebook 101, Kelly, I just wanted to say to the group, I haven't seen any questions come through yet. So if you do have specific questions on Snapchat, feel free to get them in while Kelly is introducing Facebook Live 101 in case we need to reference any of the slides she's already talked about. Go ahead, Kelly, sorry about that. No problem. Okay, so Facebook Live is something that we have started utilizing here at Cambia too. So um, yeah, I encourage you to, to test it out and we're gonna actually go through some ways for you to, to test it before, before your big event. So just a quick summary of what Facebook Live is. It's a video streaming um, that's within Facebook, that's fun and engaging way to engage with your followers. Um, viewers can provide live feedback and ask questions during the broadcast, which is, uh, which is always fun, but I wanted to make a little side note here that this means that you will want to have a plan on how you're going to answer those questions. So as feedback comes in during your presentation, are you going to stop and answer questions right away? Or are you going to um, wait till the end to answer them? And then uh, you can see the picture on the right where the, you have the icons at the bottom, that's what provides their feedback. So whether they like it or love it or so on, they can select those and you'll see them kind of um, waving throughout the, the feed. And then live videos are immediately archived and that's how you see them on your page afterwards. And people can go back and watch them um, after they've been archived. So whether they're viewing them live or not, you are still getting a lot of people to watch them. And this is Haley again. I just wanted to sort of reiterate what Kelly mentioned about um, Facebook Live being a, a good idea for most everyone on the call to at least try out this year around the giving event. Um, Kimbia has some of the data around all of the events, all of the giving events that we do throughout the year. And Facebook continues to be uh, the number one referral link for how people get to the Giving Day website, so to your actual profile page to make a donation on event day. And while I know many of you think about the Giving Day as a, gateway, a great way to engage the younger audience and hopefully millennials, um, which is why Snapchat is so appealing, are the data that we have, the demographic data that we have around who is giving during giving events continues to be um, that older crowd. So the 50 to 75 um, age group continues to be those that are most often giving on a giving day. And that is the age group that is very active on Facebook. So if you are thinking about something to just try out this year, Facebook Live could be really fun, exciting, and also not too far of a stretch for, for the work you're probably already engaged on with your Facebook profile and followers. And, and as we've done research into our customers, a lot of, I mean, let's just say if you have social, every one of you has Facebook, and then Twitter is the second place. So we, we know that y'all are using Facebook, and so like Haley said, Facebook Live would be just a little jump into um, something new, and it's, it's not gonna, you don't have to start using a different tool or anything, it's just right here for you to use right now. It's just that little icon um, right there with the arrow, with the blue arrow on it on the screen. That's what you're gonna hit to create your live uh, video. All right, um, so let's go through some of these Facebook Live tips. Uh, Facebook is recommending that your video lasts for at least 10 minutes, but it can go as long as 90 minutes, which is really amazing for something that's just within their tool. You can go ahead and post a 90 minute video, that's impressive. Um, but I do think somewhere around 10 minutes is probably where you're gonna wanna start. Um, and then, uh, make sure that you forward your call to avoid distractions during the broadcast. That was something I hadn't really thought about, but you're going to be using your phone to take the video, so you want to make sure you're not going to get a call that will interrupt the video. You also want to think about the sound around you. During a live broadcast, you're obviously going to be, there's going to be background noise, but you want to try to limit it and make sure that the viewers can hear what's going on. Always make sure to end your live video with a call to action. Here it's going to be, you know, donate or follow if it's a if it's a pre-event activity. Uh, make sure you follow during the day. Don't forget to include the date. Don't forget to include the URL for them to go to donate to. Okay, and then this one here is my favorite tip, and it's to do a practice video beforehand. And so I know this can be scary. Uh, so 
here on the right, you'll see steps for how to change your privacy setting to your Facebook view to only you. So that way, if you make a video, only you can see it. So it's a good way for you to test out the functionality, um, see how it works, get comfortable with it before you post something live for all of your viewers to see. Okay, so Facebook Live metrics uh, are really great because you can go ahead and see uh, who's watching them, if they've watched it, if they watched the entire video, if they watched it live, if they watched it after it was posted. You'll want to analyze your results to, um, to look at that and see you know, what you can do better next year. And then Facebook is offering currently the biggest audience for live videos. And I know on our last call, we had several people write in and say that they've done live videos and they had really great results. So like I said, again, I really recommend playing with that this year. I went ahead and put a screenshot from one of our live videos so you could see our results. You know, we're not having an insane amount of viewers. So I wanted to be realistic and say, you know, this is what we see. You guys will hopefully see more during a giving event. You're going to have a larger audience. And, and so, you know, hopefully you'll have much better results than we were having with this one. Kelly, we did have a, a question come in. I know you talked on this. It was um, Facebook that recommended a video lasting around 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Curious if you think that could be a little too long. I mean, I'm just personally thinking about my own engagement strategy on Facebook, I would say something around the two to three to five minutes could be fine too for a first timer. Yeah, and it's interesting if you look at the results on ours, you can see that, I, I wanna say the video was about five minutes and you can see that most people only lasted a couple of minutes. So so I, I personally would hang closer to the five minute range too. Um, I think it's interesting that you can go longer uh, on Facebook and that's why I included the information. But, but yeah, I, I'm with you guys that, you know, a couple of minutes is probably good. And maybe you do several videos of different events during the day. Um, but if you, and maybe do the last five minutes of your countdown or something, you know, there's different ideas that yeah. you can do. And then one other question that came through this, once the Facebook Live has ended, it will stay on your feed and profile the way that another video or photo would. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And that's what's so cool about Facebook Live as opposed to Snapchat or even Instagram videos is that, or Instagram stories, is that they're not going to disappear after a certain number of times and it automatically goes to your page. So I was seeing a lot of stuff about how you can go back in and edit the description if you want to after it's posted to your feed and you should do that, um, but, but it automatically does it with what you first typed into the video screen and then it'll just post onto your page and then it lives there forever. Great, thank you. Okay, so how do I keep up with all of the social media that we've talked about? And so we're gonna go through some of the tools that you can use to schedule these posts. And we, like I said, last time we talked about this a little bit too, I'm gonna to dive into um, exactly what some of these tools look like and how you can use them. And in specific, we're gonna talk about Buffer and Hootsuite. So Buffer is what I use here at Cambia to schedule all of our posts. And you can see um, in my screenshot here that in Buffer I have all of our different accounts lined up. So it's really easy for me to share something on the Cambia's Twitter feed or Facebook or LinkedIn, or I can post to the Give Local America pages, all within one application. So it's very easy. Um, and then you also have the option, so Buffer will just they have optimum times that you can just add it to your queue and it'll just set it in there, or you can go ahead and change the time and make it a custom set in time for what you want. So if you wanna have something scheduled for exactly when your event goes live, you can go ahead and schedule it to the minute of what you want. So my other favorite thing about Buffer is that it gives you some really easy ways to go through and share other people's content. So if you see uh, the, the screen on the left is how um, I have this little icon at the top of my screen where if I'm looking at an industry 
paper that has an article I want to share, I can just click right there and it'll say, add, pops up this window that I took a screenshot of and it says, do you want to add this to your buffer? And I can select which accounts I want it to go to and what I want the copy to be. And of course, keep in mind for these that you want to have, you are probably going to want to change your content for Twitter and Facebook. And that's all based on how many hashtags you use and what kind of um, tagging you're using. So it gives you the option to have a Facebook post and a Twitter post. So it's super easy as you're going about your day, you find something that you want to share with your followers to go ahead and load it into your queue. Uh, the screen on the right is if what I see when I'm in Twitter, if I'm looking at somebody else's content, there's a little button that says add to buffer. I just click that and I can go ahead and retweet it later in the day or um, retweet it next week or some other time to fill up my schedule. So these are great easy ways to add content to, um, to your schedule just when you're out and about on the internet. There's a lot of analytics that are built automatically into Buffer. Um, so even with a free account, you're able to see how all of your uh, posts have done, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus, or Twitter, and you can just go through and export the data to go back and look. And you can also retweet old posts that way. If, if one performed exceptionally well, then you can just go through and see it and, and go ahead and re-add it to your queue again. Hootsuite is another really popular scheduling tool, and it does a lot of the same stuff as Buffer and then a little bit more. Uh, and one of the features that people really like about Hootsuite is the stream feature where you can listen to all of your social media accounts in one platform. So you can, you have, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this is what Hootsuite Streams looks like. You can set up different columns. For example, on ours, you can see we follow giving influencers, then we follow nonprofit resources, and then we're following reporters, and then we're following nonprofits from Give Local Americas in the past. And so we see all of the streams of what people are posting on throughout the day, and you can easily go in there and retweet or like or respond or engage with them. So, uh, for example, if you are using this as a nonprofit, you might want to follow other nonprofits in your community, or you might want to follow your community foundation lead or United Way lead. Um, and then if you have different influencers in your community, like reporters or um, large businesses that might be of interest to you, you could set up these streams so you can easily monitor them and see what's going on. And then here's a, a screenshot of what the analytics look like in this tool. You can create custom reports, which people really like about Hootsuite. And then it also just gives you the standard reports that, that you'd want to look at. Okay, and if you're not going to be using a scheduling tool like one of those that we just talked about, I wanted to go ahead and, and look at the Facebook and Twitter tools, just how the analytics work within those. And they're actually really powerful now. They keep getting better and better. So this is a screenshot of what Facebook Insights looks like. And um, so you will see that it just shows you all of your different posts and then what the reach and engagement was. And, and like I said before, analytics are something you might not have a chance to be looking at during your event, but you're going to want to go back after when the dust settles, go back and look and see, hey, you know, what really worked, what didn't work, what do I want to make sure to do more of next year, what do I want to tweak a little bit um, to maybe have better results. You can see, you know, how many people clicked through your donation, your calls to donate, and there's lots of information you can get from these, and you're going to want to, to make sure that you invest a little bit of time digging around in these afterwards just to make sure that you're, you're growing from your event. Here's a look at what Twitter looks like. Um, the really user-friendly, these are... Like I said, just within your platform already, just go in, take a look. You can see what you're, what you're growing month over month, what changes. Make sure that um, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in and we can go through these in more detail. We have had a couple of questions come through. For um, the Facebook analytics, where within their account do they find that? Okay, so at the top, um, if you, 
you, they can see my mouse, right? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so here, um, your page is where you are most likely. That's what you. That's probably where you um, are going to. What you're going to be on when you hit your Facebook page. And then if you just go over to the side, there's an insights tab that you'll click on, and that's what brings this screen up. And that's automatically free and set up for every exactly. Facebook account. Yes, yeah, everybody has it. It's there. Um, they just Facebook changes things a lot. So I feel like it's always changing. And now if you, when you're in your, it's, when you're, you have to go to your page. So if you have like in a personal account, it's where you're going to go to when you first log into Facebook. So you'll want to make sure that you go into your nonprofit organization page and then you'll see these up here at the top. Great. And for both Buffer and Hootsuite, do they both have a free account available? They do. Yeah, they both have okay. a free account. We have paid versions because we have so many accounts set up within within one of them. But I think Buffer, you can have like two or three for free, and then after that, you have to pay. And, and even when you pay, it's, a, it's not a very significant amount. I can't remember what it is, but it's something like 120 a year or something. So, so not very much money. Great. And would you also um, show us in a little more detail, like you just did for Facebook, where in Twitter you see the insights or yeah, let me analytics tab? Um, okay, so I think on Twitter, I'm trying to remember how I got this. Um, I think you go to your icon, like where your page is right here, and you just click the down arrow, and then there was a tab that said, that said analytics. Great. Thank and then you. it opens up this screen here, and then from there, you, there's different, there's a, this is the home one, and then this was top tweets is what, this is what pulls this up, is the second tab over here. Great, and we've got one more question that's a little, um, off topic for analytics, but on topic for Twitter. So when you're in Twitter, how can you create those short URLs that are um, better to be used in tweets so they take up less characters? Yeah, yeah. So um, we went through this a lot in the first one, so I don't want to spend a ton of time on it because you, we have a bunch of the tools that you can use um, listed out in that first one. So we'll definitely send out the link and you can go through and look at the slides and pull the specific tools. But if you're using something like Buffer or Hootsuite, it's going to automatically use URL shorteners when you type in oh, there. Okay. So you don't even have to think about it. You just put in the full URL and it just automatically changes it to a shortened one. Great. So that's, I, like I said, I really like Buffer. I find it very user friendly. I highly recommend um, trying out that one. Great, we are all caught up on questions. Great, we are um, nearing the end of the presentation here. So I wanted to put in one plea uh, to not forget about ads. Uh, I know that social media ads can seem really scary and expensive, and again, as time goes on, these are getting easier and easier to use, and also cheap. I put some of the promotions that Kimbia has done over there on the screenshot, again, just to be realistic and say, like, look, we're just spending $100 here and there on some different ads, and we're getting quite a few, quite a, quite a large reach. And for something like a giving event, you can really see great results from posting some ads on this. Um, you're going to reach people that you wouldn't reach before. And uh, you can really target your audience to a specific area so you're not spending money on clicks from, from places that don't matter. Uh, so, you know, if you want it just to be your, your local community, you can set all of those in your audience. And um, even different, like, brackets of ages and brackets of, of um, income levels and things. So just you might want to take a gander and peek at those uh, different tools within LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and just see if you have a, a little bit of budget for that. It might be worth investing. All right, so we've come to the end of the presentation. I wanted to let you know that we are going to be emailing out the free social media toolkit. We talked about this in the first webinar and we didn't quite have it finished yet. It is officially finished now. So we will send it out to all of those who registered for the first webinar and the second webinar um, at the end of this presentation. We're gonna, we'll download the video, make sure we send out the recording, the slides, the link to the first webinar, and the free social media toolkit link. Great, so again with that, um, thank you so much Kelly for taking the time and, and walking through this. I, I did want to highlight one more thing uh, related to the Facebook Live. 
option that's available um, for all of you because I do think that is something that um, just about everybody could be trying this year. Um, one of the most important things that we talk about in, in uh, promoting your organization and, and being successful in a giving day is sharing stories. And it really does seem like many of you could think about creative ways to use um, the Facebook Live to um, engage your donors, um, to have your constituents who use your services share stories, um, to you know ask them basic questions about why giving local is important to them, um, connecting directly with your audience and telling them why you're participating in your local giving event, what the funds will be used for, um, all of those things that um, are included probably in your uh, local toolkit um, and how to be successful in a giving day and thinking about how you can do that in Facebook Live. I think that's definitely one of the biggest takeaways I had in listening to this presentation after you know, not being very familiar with Facebook Live myself. I think that's something that would be really exciting to see a lot of you do. Yeah, and, and in the first webinar, we talked about different creative ideas for using social media, and one of them was to not forget about live in-person events. But if you are doing an in-person event, that's a great opportunity to use Facebook Live when you have all those people right there in front of you and you have something exciting to show. Um, you know, showing the leaderboard on, on a screen if it's being displayed somewhere. They're all fun, exciting things that you can share that, that viewers that are watching uh, or, or following along on Facebook would love to be able to see. Yeah, so think about things both leading up to the day and, and, and on the day and how you can use those videos. So with that, we are all caught up on questions. So um, again, look for a follow-up email from us that includes all of these great resources so you can either share it with your team um, or go back and watch yourself. Um, and again, thank you, Kelly, for these great slides and this great information. And thank you all um, attendees for joining us today. We are less than a month away from the Giving Day. So um, good luck with everything leading up to the event, and thanks again. Thank you, Haley.